Hello everyone. Before we get started, I'd like to give a shout out to one of my newest members. David Wayne, thank you for becoming a member and supporting the channel. Members are given shout outs in my videos and you can easily become a member by clicking the join button. All right, let's get started. So today we're going to be looking at a radical expression, an infinite radical. And we have the square root of 2 plus the square root of 2 minus the square root of 2 plus the square root of 2 minus the square root of 2. So it's just going to alternate. The signs are going to alternate plus minus plus minus. Obviously, I didn't write the whole thing because I can't write the whole thing, but hopefully you get the idea. And we're always going to have 2 inside the radicals. So if we had all plus signs, obviously, we, we would have, an, I think we looked at it um, something like this before, right? You know that these expressions uh, converge. Uh, we're not going to get into the proof, but these expressions converge uh, since our expression is always smaller than that because we have the minus signs, which is going to make it smaller, so on and so forth. This expression is also going to converge to a certain value. So we want to find uh, the value that this converges to. You can also write this as a sequence. Uh, you know, you can define the first term and then you can say square root of 2 plus that, so on and so forth. But we're just going to take the you know quick and easy approach we're going to set this expression equal to something and hopefully we're going to find a value that makes sense for us and i'm also going to show you some uh you know terms some of the terms and hopefully that'll also give you an idea where this might converge anyways without further ado let's go ahead and set this equal to x and what does that entail well, if you set this whole thing equal to x, since it's going to alternate, I have to be very careful and uh, kind of pick a piece inside this radical, because this radical is kind of containing itself very many times. Uh, I have to make sure that I pick the same thing. So I want to start here, right? The rest is going to be the same because I started off with square root of 2 plus something. So this expression is also going to be x. Obviously, these are infinite expressions, so we kind of have to be careful. We already said that this is going to converge, so on and so forth. There are some links that I can also share with you. Uh, when I searched this, obviously, after I kind of thought about this problem, uh, I found out that there are some websites that talk about it, and I'll also share these links below if I forget, you know, what to do. Okay, so um, let's go ahead and write this in a nicer form. Square root of 2 plus the square root of 2 minus x is going to equal x. So this is really nice because an infinite expression basically collapses into a finite equation. Uh-oh, those are the values that I'm going to show you. But anyways, after we kind of uh, square both sides, we're going to come up with an equation, right? So let's go ahead and do that here. I'm going to square both sides, right? And then put the, um, kind of isolate the radical. And obviously, I'm going to square both sides one more time. So let's go ahead and do that. If you square this and square that, obviously, here you want to be careful. Uh, whatever x value you find must uh, be working. Uh, you can also check the domain of this function and other method. Or at the end, you can just plug in all the x values. Since this is not going to be too hard, we can definitely uh, do that. But notice that x needs to be positive in this case. First of all, note that x is positive. So we're not going to accept any negative values. All right, great. So by squaring both sides, we get the following. 2 minus x equals x to the fourth minus 4x squared plus 4. And if I arrange the terms, I'm going to get a quartic equation here, right? And that quartic equation is going to look like the following. It's going to be x to the fourth minus 4x squared plus x and minus uh, plus 2. Okay, great. So that's going to be a positive. So this is a quartic equation. So what we're going to do is we're going to solve this quartic equation by using factoring. Don't get intimidated by this equation because it's solvable uh, by factoring. It's very, it's very actually very easy to solve. I just realized after uh, thinking about this problem, it just you know came up. Anyways, uh, let's go ahead and take a look at some numerical values, and then we will go back and uh, solve this equation by factoring. Make sense? Okay, great. So here's here's some numerical values uh, that we get from uh, looking at this, um, you know, infinite uh, radical. So if you just expand a little bit, like square root of 2 plus the square root of 2 minus square root of 2, so you kind of step on the third square root of 2, you get something like 1.66. Does that give you an idea? But if you continue, you're going to get something like 1.546, 1.606, 1.635, 1.62. 
So what happens here is that the values get smaller and then larger and then larger and then smaller, so on and so forth. So it kind of goes back and forth, sort of, because of the plus minus signs. Now, what is this going to uh, lead to? We're going to find out by solving the quartic equation and eliminate the extraneous roots. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at our quartic equation. Hopefully, by this time, you have an idea what the solution is going to look like. Okay, great. So now I'm going to rewrite my quartic equation, which was x to the fourth power minus 4x squared plus x plus 2 is equal to 0. Hmm, interesting. How do we solve this equation by factoring? Let's take a look. I'm going to group these terms into two groups and x squared times x squared minus 4. And I'll just take out a 1, x plus 2. Okay, great. So x squared minus 4 is factorable by difference of two squares. And now this is where we are able to factor by using a common factor, which is x plus 2 in this case. So x plus 2 is a common factor. Notice that. Uh, so we're going to take out x plus 2, but that's going to bring some interesting surprises. Uh, now we're going to distribute the x squared here. So it's going to give us x cubed minus 2x squared, and then finally plus 1, and the whole thing is equal to 0. Awesome. So from the first factor, which is the common factor, we get x equals negative 2. Remember, we said that we're not going to accept negative values because our expression is definitely a positive quantity. And you can prove that that shouldn't be too hard. And you looked at the first few terms and you kind of noticed that they're always positive. But it doesn't prove that everything is going to be positive here. Of course, we need a more rigorous proof. So x equals negative 2 is not going to be accepted. So we end up with or we're left with a cubic equation. Let's go ahead and try to solve that equation. x cubed minus 2x squared plus 1 is equal to 0. Now, this cubic equation is also very easy to solve because if you look at the sum of the coefficients, 1 minus 2 plus 1, you get 0. And what does that mean? It means that x equals 1 is a solution, and that just means that x minus 1 is a factor. So factor theorem, rational root theorem, whatever theorem, tells you a lot of different things. So x minus 1 is a factor. And let's go ahead and um, figure out how we can factor this with that knowledge. So I can kind of break down the negative 2x squared into negative x squared minus x squared or minus x squared minus x squared, however you want to see it. Some folks don't like the term negative because it's used for negative numbers, but I also use it as a, as a minus term. Anyways, doesn't matter. I, I, I guess it's no big deal. Factor out x squared, you get x minus 1. Awesome. And then minus, uh, this is going to give us a negation of uh, x squared minus 1. Now, this is cool because x squared minus 1 is factorable. It's difference of two squares. If you ask me what is the most important formula, I would probably say difference of two squares in factoring, of course. And then x minus 1 times x squared. Now, you have to subtract it, so it's going to be x squared minus x minus 1. Now, this problem has a surprise ending, so just wait for that, okay? So now, from here, we get um, a quadratic and a linear. So x minus 1 equals 0 gives us x equals 1. Great. Not so great, because if you go back to the original equation, not the expression, but the equation, you'll notice that x equals 1 gives us the following. So 1, square root of 1 is 1, so it's square root of 3, equals 1. Obviously, that's not true. So x equals 1 does not work. We're going to reject it. Yay! So we end up with the quadratic equation. Let's go ahead and solve this quadratic by using the quadratic formula, and this is where the surprises are. All right. Hopefully, you already figured it out. Now, from here, we get x equals negative b plus minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac. You know the story. Divide by 2, and this is equal to 1 plus minus square root of 5 over 2. But this gives us two solutions, 1 minus root 5 over 2 and 1 plus root 5 over 2. Unfortunately, this is a negative quantity, so we're also going to reject that. And we end up with a single solution. Yay! And guess what? That is our famous or infamous, whatever you want to call that, golden ratio. Yay! This is the 
golden ratio. This is kind of like a golden radical. If you could also call this a golden radical problem, but I didn't want to spoil the surprise. But anyways, obviously there are other ways to express golden ratio. For example, you can also write it as one square root of one plus the square root of one plus the square root of one dot dot dot. You can also use it with square root of two, so on and so forth. There are so many ways you can use infinite uh, radical expressions or infinite uh, rational expressions and so on and so forth. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you tomorrow with another problem, right? Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.